Hello, I'm Kathy Barber, welcoming you to another edition of Tomorrow's Technology Today. Our first story comes to you from Japan, where they've been working on an amazing new robot that could change our lives. Now, we all know about robots which can build cars. They never get sick or take extra tea breaks. You just switch them on and let them do the rest. But all they have to do is repeat the same task over and over again. What about a robot which could deal with new and different situations and decide for itself what to do? James has the story. Over to you, James. Thanks, Kathy. I'm standing here in the carefully planned streets of Tokyo Science City, home to Iwamoto Cybernetics, who announced a week ago their revolutionary new robot system, Driver 7. Earlier, I spoke to Dr. Green, a Scottish scientist who's been working on the project. I asked him to tell me what makes Driver 7 such a breakthrough. Our aim was to produce a system which could detect important changes in its environment and change its own behavior to cope with them. As you know, Driver 7 is able to drive a car or bus safely in normal traffic conditions, even though these conditions are changing constantly. Can you tell us about some of the greatest difficulties you faced? Yes, certainly. One crucial problem was to do with recognition. Driver 7 has much better eyesight than human drivers. It receives images from cameras pointing in all directions around the vehicle. In other words, it can see backwards, to both sides, and forwards all at the same time. It has no blind spots. And I believe it can also see in much greater detail than us. That's right. Driver 7 can read a number plate at a distance of 300 meters, if the weather is good. In heavy rain, the figure is still over 100 meters, far superior to average human eyesight. So the problem is? The problem is to make Driver 7 understand what it sees. Let me give you an example. It's very important for any driver to recognize a red light. A driver who failed to respond properly to traffic lights would soon end up in hospital or under arrest. (laughs) But drivers must not stop at any red light or even at any circular red light. There are lots of circular red lights which don't mean stop. The brake lights of many cars are circular and red, and we don't want Driver 7 to stop its vehicle every time it sees a brake light. I see. So you had to teach Driver 7 to recognize which red lights mean stop and which don't. Exactly. We tried various methods and for many months made very little progress. One idea, which seemed promising for a while, was to program the robot to respond to circular red lights only if they were at one end of a row of three lights. You'd think that would solve the problem, wouldn't you? It seems like a good idea. Unfortunately, there's a chain of 24-hour shops. Maybe you've heard of them. Stop, go, quick, stop? No. Anyway, their company logo is based on traffic lights, red, yellow and green. Driver 7 was thrown into complete confusion by this flashing display. Obviously, you have found a way to solve the problem. Yes. As a matter of fact, I got the idea from a toy my son likes to play with. The details of our method are, of course, secret, but I can tell you that it depends on teaching Driver 7 where to expect traffic lights. Traffic lights occur at crossroads and so on. Once we told Driver 7 to put this kind of road information together with the row of three lights information, we found that the stop-go problem stopped. (laughs) Fascinating. And I suppose you see great business potential in Driver 7. Will we soon see buses and taxis in Tokyo driven by Driver 7 and his brothers? Oh no. Human drivers are much cheaper. But we do intend to fit Driver 7 to the company president's car. Which reminds me, we still have to teach Driver 7 to recognize a golf course. (laughs) (laughs) Dr. Green, thank you for joining us on the program. My pleasure. Work is continuing here on the development of the robot driver. Costs may rule it out of practical service for the time being, 
But it may not be too long before we see Driver 7 on our roads and perhaps in control of trains or even aeroplanes. Can we look forward to a time when human error no longer presents a threat? Or should we hesitate to place our lives in the hands of any mechanical man? Back to you, Kathy, in the studio. <laughs>